Okay, thank you for uh, your invitation to this nice workshop. So I'm going to talk about uh, some work I've been doing in the last uh, few years. Um, it's a bit, uh, it's not really orthogonal to the, the talk people have done, but it's uh, because it's, it's really quantum field theory, but it's a special type of quantum field theory called conformal field theory. Uh, which was uh, it's a uh, quite uh, well studied topic in physics, a little bit less in math, um, and it's studied from uh, many different perspectives, like uh, algebraic method, uh, representation theory, moduli spaces, and also probability. And uh, this is uh, this is the direction we we we're looking at is the probabilistic uh, approach. And we try to connect to all these approaches, like algebraic and representation theory, and so on. Um, so okay, okay, so let me start with uh, just a bit of uh, uh, motivation, so an explanation of uh, conformal field theory. So this will be in dimension two. <coughs> That's important. Uh, conformal field theory is uh, much much more studied in dimension two because you have a, a large group of symmetries which are uh, given by the holomorphic function uh, in dimension two. You have many you have many local conformal symmetries. So in a conformal field theory, you have one thing which is a partition function. So this is a, a partition function associated to a, a surface with a, with a Riemannian uh, metric. I will denote uh, G is the conformal class, which is the same as, uh, so it's an oriented surface. So this is the same as a uh, complex structure. Uh, the partition function is going to be a number, let's say in R, could be in seven in C, but, uh, and the partition function should, I mean, what it means in physics is, uh, uh, Is a path, it corresponds to a path integral on the set of function on the surface with value, let's say in C, or even it could be in some bundle. I put C here. And uh, you, you, you integrate uh, a certain uh, action. So this is uh, supposed to be the uniform measure on the set of function. Okay, so I put uh, I put this because this is really a formal object, at least mathematically. And what is S? S is a S is just a functional. So a priori it could be with value in C, but uh, okay for yeah okay let, let's put it with value in C. So this is a, a, a classical action. Which is a functional, and uh, if you want a conformal field theory, it should be a conformal invariant or conformally covariant. So it means the action depends on a background metric G, but in fact, it should depend. It should depend only on the conformal class, roughly speaking. When I say invariant, uh, it's not necessarily invariant, but covariant. It should change in a nice way when you, when you scale the metric by the conformal factor. Okay, and uh, what we need to have is the following property that if we scale the metric with uh, a function, a smooth function omega. Basically, the partition function should not change up to a rather 
a rather simple factor, which is called the Liouville uh, functional. Uh, and here, kg is the, the scalar curvature. Uh, sorry for the notation in physics. I know it's usually RG, but uh, it's twice the ghost curvature in this dimension. And there is a, a parameter here, C. Is an important parameter which is called the central charge, which will which will come in later in the talk, in this uh, Virasoro algebra. A little c is an element in in, in the complex plane which is uh, called central charge. And it's an important parameter of uh, conformal field theory. Okay, so the mass of this formal measure should have this nice. Uh, uh, scaling when you scale the, the metric uh, conformally. So this is one thing. The second thing is uh, correlation functions. Like in any quantum field theory, you want to measure correlation functions. So you fix, uh, you fix uh, many points on your surface. I mean, or even one point if you want. X1, X2, X3, and you, you, you attach some weight uh, to this point. It's a bit like uh, decoration at this point, if you want, and so on. And you, you want to define a, 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 certain in, a, a certain quantity, which I will denote like this. Uh, M, so there are M points. Huh? And this should represent, for a physicist, huh? uh, the path integral, huh? actually one over uh, Zg, Z sigma G, of the, the, the path integral of uh, over, let's say, a smooth function um, of, of certain functional of the field. With respect to this uh, classical action that we have uh, chosen. So let me just start with a quick example uh, for this action. An example, the basic example, is just uh, this to be uh, gradient phi square, EVG, V on sigma, just uh, the Dirichlet energy, and this is called uh, this is called the free field theory. If you take this action, it's a Gaussian, then you get a Gaussian measure here. Uh, okay, and what are these V? V x one alpha i of phi as a map from function in C infinity. Uh, they have to be local functional. It's not really completely true, but uh, they have to be, but yeah, L local functional uh, depending only. What I mean by local, they depend only on, on, on finitely many jets, many, or, or on, on the jet, if you want, on the finite jet of the field at uh, x, uh, here is i, at xi. So an example, which uh, will come in my talk, an example will be v x i alpha i of phi is exponential alpha i phi of x i. You, you take the exponential, evaluate phi at x i, multiply by alpha i. Okay, so these are the correlation function, and, and, and the correlation function should satisfy, again, a nice property that uh, if you change your background metric, Uh, 
this is the same as the the same with the original metric, and then you get uh, you get uh, a, a, an anomaly if you want, but which is completely explicit. And what is uh, this delta alpha i? Uh, I'll put it here. So. The delta alpha is, is just a, a function of alpha, which you have to, to find, and which is called the conformal weight. So an example for that will come into my, my case, that will come into uh, in, in my case, this will be, for instance, uh, delta alpha will be alpha over two, and um, let's say, Two minus alpha over two for some q in uh, in R. Just a polynomial, for instance. This will be this example will come in my talk, so this is why I give it. To but anyway, so so this this thing are important. The central charge this this plays a role with the Virasov algebra, so the algebra of symmetry of the model, and this conformal weight they tell you uh, locally uh, how uh, a local field is scaling somehow. Of course, yeah, of course, the, the, the thing, so these guys, they are called primary field in physics. And for, depending on, on, on the, the action you take, uh, somehow uh, you have to choose what is the right primary field. And this is, you don't choose it randomly. It has to be chosen with respect to the symmetry of the model. And um, this will, yeah, so it's it's a whole uh, job to find what are the primary field actually in this business. So, uh, yeah, I will come to this. This is related to uh, it, it's connected to the spectrum, the alpha, or essentially the spectrum of a certain operator, which is the Hamiltonian of the theory, which you can think as the propagator in a field theory. So the alpha here, the the the, the alpha i. Uh, you have to, but I, I'll come to this. It's a spectrum of, a, of an operator, yeah, essentially, which will play an important role. And this operator is one of the elements of the Virazo algebra. So now, uh, okay, so this is for uh, conformal field theory. Um, now there is a general, uh, uh, actually, a really amazing uh, work of uh, Belavin. Yeah, if you're the free field, uh, you can express uh, the partition function in terms of the determinant of Laplacian. Uh, C is, uh, I don't remember if it's one or some number. It's just the, the conformal anomaly of Polyakov. Uh, well, I mean, of course, if you, yeah, if you take product, uh, Product of uh, n time uh, the free field theory, uh, it will increase uh, the, the central charge. But uh, you know, it's just the free field, so it's not. Everything is known about the free field. Like the correlation function, they are just like green function uh, evaluated at different points. So it's not a very interesting theory. I mean, it's okay. It's nice to have it, but uh, so what is, what is interesting is uh, maybe free field plus nonlinear perturbation. So there is an amazing work of Belavin, Polyakov, Molochikov in the I think it's 84, which is called conformal bootstrap. Method, which basically tell you you can compute the endpoint function. In terms, of, in terms of three-point function on the sphere, plus uh, an algebraic uh, plus algebraic 
quantity, which is called a conformal block. So this you can think as building block of a CFT. Of, the, all, all, of all the CFTs somehow. And this conformal block, they, they, they essentially depend only uh, on this conformal uh, weight here, this alpha i which come uh, in this scaling, and the central charge. So it depends only on, on central charge. On central charge and conformal weight. Basically, uh, using representation theory. They come from representation theoretic thing. They're studied a lot uh, in physics, a little bit less in math, but still they, they have been studied in, in algebraic geometry, for instance, and in representation theory. There are still many things that we don't know about them. Even the conver their convergence, for instance, because there, there are like series uh, over moduli parameters. Uh, and the three-point function, this one is model dependent. Huh? Depends on the model, which means on the action we take. So you could have, you could imagine that you have two conformal field theory with the same central charge, same uh, conformal weight. Then you will have the same Virasoro conformal block, but the, the three-point function will be different. So there are two quantity conformal block, kind of universal thing, algebraic, and one which is three-point function. It's kind of crazy, but uh, all CFT somehow are. The model is contained in like three point function. It's like one function. Okay. Actually, yeah, honestly, I don't, I don't really know some, but <laughs> so there might be some. Uh, maybe, it, yeah. Yeah, it's not, not clear, but. Uh, but yeah, but you can at least there are some where which have the same central charge and some of the conformal weights are the same, for instance. You can have some contained in other, for instance. And, um, okay, so the central charge uh, can take many values. So this is a picture of the central charge C in, in C. There's a, a number. 25, so when you're uh, real valued uh, uh, and bigger than 25, uh, one can have uh, unit, what is called unitary theory. Essentially, uh, one way to, it's related to the fact that the, the, the Hamiltonian of the, this operator will be self-adjoint. The operator which have the conformal weight. Uh, Hamiltonian is self-adjoint. And here, typically, uh, they have also continuous spectrum. It means that all these conformal weights, they actually form a whole continuous family. And there are some other, uh, here you have one, Zero. Um, and here also, here one can have unitary theory. Can be unitary and uh, can also have a discrete spectrum. Between zero and one. And then you also have negative number where, uh, where this is not unitary, but also discrete spectrum, it's possible, but also you can have continuous spectrum. And uh, in this interval, uh, this interval 
is quite important because uh, this is related to statistical model, uh, statistical physics. So typically, if you take easing models, POTS model, ON model, all these models are discrete models, and you know, you know you, they depend on some parameter. They enjoy, uh, or maybe percolation, they enjoy critical uh, phase, phase transition. And if you look at the scaling limit in this uh, phase transition, you, you would typically fall in this interval between 0 and 1. So this is why people have considered them a lot in physics, uh, especially in this thing. And between 25 and infinity, uh, there, are, there are models uh, related to quantum gravity in 2D. Um, in the work of Polyakov and so on. Um, and, and, and you can view them as scaling limit here for, for those models of quantum gravity. You can view them as scaling limit of uh, random triangulation of surface. So you take random geometry, you take more and more, you, you tune some parameter. In the limit, you get a, a continuous field theory, and uh, they would fall in this, uh, in this interval. Okay. So this is just to give a rough uh, picture of just what is CFT. Now I'll come to something more concrete. Uh, so there are two theories that uh, we've been interested in. One uh, is called uh, Liouville, and it falls in this interval. It has continuous spectrum, and its central charge is between 25 and infinity. It's unitary. And uh, something that we call imaginary Liouville, which actually fall in this uh, region, the, the, the yellow region. Yes? Yes. Sorry, which one? Yeah, well, I mean, okay. If, if, if you want to work with probability, it has to be revalued, but, uh, you know, you can try to... I mean, you can do many things. So you could imagine it's even a complex number, maybe, depending on your model. In what we will work, it will be real value, though, yeah. and, and positive, actually. Because it has to be partition function. OK, so what, is, what are these uh, Liouville and uh, imaginary Liouville? Uh, the action, S sigma G of phi, uh, is uh, the free field, uh, the free field uh, part. Uh, then you get uh, a linear term, so Q is going to be a parameter. Um, So this is the action. So you get the, the, the Dirichlet energy, a linear term. Kg, again, is the scalar curvature. Gamma is a, a parameter between 0 and 2. So you, you put a, an exponential nonlinearity. And you tune Q with respect to gamma. You can check that this action has nice conformal covariance. Um, OK, so that's the thing. And the V alpha, V X I alpha I that you want to choose, they are exponential alpha I, the field at X I. That's what it is. So this is a real Uville, and this falls into this category. In my talk, I will show you, I will explain how to construct the Virazo representation uh, associated to this uh, and conformal block, what, what they are, associated to this uh, Uville thing. And now there is imaginary Uville. So imaginary Liouville also is interesting because uh, it can also be related to model of statistical physics. So here, uh, I put some, uh, actually, the statistical physics model can also go further. So th th this region can also contain a mod model from statistical physics, like ON models, or POTS model. Uh, and imaginary Liouville.
Oh yeah, so I should say that uh, there are certain there are certain family. Old minimal models of statistics, which have been uh, solved by, uh, by 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 BPZ by Belavin Polakov Zamolchikov. And what, what I mean by solved is like they, they just like found the three point function and found basically the, the they found uh, the value, if you want, to, of all the correlation function. They found explicit formula completely. It's quite amazing. And this is based on represent just representation theory of Virazo algebra. It's completely algebraic. Uh, imaginary Liouville, so the action is similar. Um, You get grad phi square minus i q over four pi. Uh, ah, sorry. Um, sorry, I forgot to four pi. One over four. No, what am I saying? So sorry. One over four pi here. It's one over four pi i q k g phi, and then here instead of putting the exponential, you take the imaginary uh, exponential. So I put a beta here, and here q is going to be tuned uh, in term of beta with the same type of uh, formula, but with a minus. Okay. Oh, and here I, I forgot to say delta alpha is alpha over two q minus alpha over two, the conformal weight. Uh, and here, um, here there are some conditions. So there are con plus condition on beta. Basically, it has to be a rational number. And uh, the vertex, the primary field, in this case, uh, they are uh, similar. Uh, they are given by exponent, so alpha j, or just exponential i alpha j, the field at xj. So you see, it's more or less the same function, except that you, you take imaginary here, uh, q becomes imaginary, and in the vertex, you put a, a, an i here. You like to kind of complexify everything. And then you fall into the, <laughs> the negative uh, region. The spectrum is discrete for this theory. And it's conjectured uh, to be a scaling limit of uh, loop models, like, like POTS model typically. And maybe uh, with some work related to minimal models. So for example, minimal models is not known uh, in mathematics, at least, to which uh, action we cannot, we are not able to really construct a measure which uh, represents the minimal model. So they are solved algebraically, but not, not like really defining a measure uh, in terms of probability and so on. So this is uh, actually uh, some work in progress, and we believe that uh, using this, we should maybe produce uh, minimal models uh, using a probabilistic representation. Okay, so let me explain now Virazo, where the Virazo algebra come and how to how to how to make it appear somehow. I should say, so here, uh, there is a, we did a probabilistic construction of this Louisville theory. And this is work with uh, Kainan. 
Uh, Rémi Rod, Vincent Vargas. And uh, there was work with uh, François David also, originally, with uh, Kupinen Rod and Vargas. And this imaginary Louisville uh, is something that we're working on now. It's Kupinen and Rod and Vargas. Uh, uh, sorry, Rod. Uh, let's see. Okay, Virazoro now. What is Virazoro? Virazoro is an infinite dimensional Lie algebra, which in, CF, in conformal field theory is a sort to, uh, you can interpret it as a quantization of uh, local holomorphic transformation. So here, okay, just one thing. So I said there is a probabilistic construction. What do I mean by probabilistic construction? It means that the correlation function and the partition function, the way we define them, they are defined as expectation of certain, uh, of certain random variable uh, of a certain random variable, which is uh, called the Gaussian free field, which will come now. So uh, X is a random variable. It's a random distribution. Called Gaussian free field. Okay. So it's just there exists a probabilistic representation in terms of a random distribution. So it's with value in some negative sobre space on the surface. And I, I will construct it. So Virazoro algebra, what it is, it's an algebra which satisfies the following relation. So let me start with a, a basic thing. Define Ln to be Z n plus one D over DZ. It's a holomorphic vector field on C. Actually, meromorphic if n, n here could be uh, in Z. So you view this as a uh, meromorphic vector field. If you compute uh, the commutator, this is a simple exercise, you get uh, n minus m, l n plus m, right? So this is called the Witt algebra. So it's a set of meromorphic vector fields with uh, poles at zero and infinity. So this is with algebra. Now, what is Virazoro? It's a central extension of this algebra, which basically means you add one element, and the commutation relation will be more or less the same. There will just be uh, one little change. So they are generated by Ln for n in Z, and they satisfy the commutation relation, which is the following. It's uh, n minus m, Ln plus m, Thus, the central charge, something called the central charge, which of course has something to do with uh, what I said before, over uh, 12 delta uh, m plus n zero. This is a Necker symbol, and then m squared minus m. And here, uh, the central charge. Okay, either if you think of L as being uh, represented as acting on a Hilbert space or a vector space, you can view C as a constant time the identity, basically. Otherwise, you, you view it as an element of the algebra. So if you want, uh, there is C also. You just add one element to your width algebra, so little ln become big ln. You see, you have the same type of relation, but then, then there is this additional uh, term. Uh, and C, I didn't say C commute with... Uh, and now, uh, what we know from uh, the work of uh, Belavin, Polakov, Zamochikov, and, and, and other people is that the Vira, there is all, in a CFT, there is always a Virazoro algebra hidden somewhere, which, is, which gives you a huge group of symmetry which will allow to 
we get this bootstrap formula that everything boils down to the three-point function, and you have these algebraic terms. So now my goal now is to, 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 to show you how to construct a representation of the zero zero algebra in a certain Hilbert space associated, for instance, to this action. And this is how we can solve the theory, actually. In this work, we solve the theory by, by basically, uh, uh, well, first constructing probabilistically, and then uh, trying to see uh, where, uh, this Virajor, where this Virazor algebra come into play, and then there is some analytic part for diagonalizing the Hamiltonian. So this is like three steps on one. So now, uh, Virazor representation. In a Hilbert space, H, which is, what is the Hilbert space? Is the space of field, what I mean by field is function or distribution, on the unit circle. So we construct a representation of the Virazo algebra in the space of function uh, on S1. How we do that? First, uh, I need to take uh, a meromorphic vector field on the disk. On the unit disk, we suppose uh, uh, sorry, mer uh, holomorphic, holomorphic vector field uh, on the unit disk with uh, V of zero is zero. So I, I take the unit disk in the complex plane, zero, and I take a holomorphic uh, vector field like this, which vanish at zero. Uh, I will say, um, so V of Z, you can write it as uh, V1 of Z plus I V2 of Z, where these are real, real valued. So it means you can view, by taking the real and imaginary part, you can view V of Z as a vector field from R2, uh, on R2 actually, a map from R2 to R2. But each point, uh, you get a direction. Okay, v of z gives you a direction just by viewing it as a vector field on R2. So we will say that this vector field is Markovian. Um, we'll say that the, the vector field is Markovian if, if it has well, a kind of Markovian property that it's flowing, uh, it's contracting the unit disk towards zero. Okay, so we say that V is Markovian if new V is positive uh, at S1 uh, where nu is the incoming uh, normal vector. You have nu, you take uh, your vector field V, you view it as a vector field for on R2, and you assume that V is only incoming, so only pointing inside the domain, okay? So what it says is that if Ft is the flow, it will tell you that Ft, it's a consequence that uh, Ft of D is included in Fs of D if uh, T is larger than S. So if you flow the disk in forward time, it will contract to a certain subdomain at time T. So this is, oh sorry, at time S. And now if you flow further, you actually contract even more. And in the end you will, con you will contract to just zero because uh, the vector field is uh, vanishing at zero. Okay, so it has a Markovian property in a way. Of course, it's not it's deterministic, but uh, it, 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 it thinks really domain or contracting so. So I will consider this vector field, and I want to make it act. Uh, I want to create a dynamic from this uh, flow on the set of function. So consider now 
H1, the Sobol F space uh, on D, Sobol F space of order one. Then I can define uh, MT, a map from H1 of D to H1 of D. By just taking a function u, I compose u with the flow at time t. Okay? So it creates me a dynamic. And I want to put a measure now on this space. If I put a measure, I will have a, a dynamical system on the measured space. And then I can try to see if this measure is an invariant measure or something. So the measure I want to put is a Gaussian measure, infinite dimensional Gaussian measure. And there is a slight problem here, is that in fact, there is no good Gaussian measure on H1. So in fact, uh, there's a kind of twist here. We need to work not on H1, but on some negative sober space. Gaussian measure. It's not really possible to, not really possible, or at least if it's possible, it would not be a good measure. So we have to replace, uh, we need to replace, uh, uh, yeah. And if I put a Gaussian measure, so this Gaussian measure should represent, uh, it should represent uh, uh, this measure, exponential minus gradient u square on the disk. Uh, dv, du, where, where du, let's say, is the uniform measure on the set of H1 function. Okay? So now if you do this, uh, so I told you it's not really possible, but uh, I, I'll come to this uh, soon. So now, but uh, u, you can also write it as u0, where, where this is in the sobre space H1, with, which vanish on the boundary, function which vanish on the boundary, plus p of phi, uh, where p of phi is the p is for Poisson is the harmonic extension of uh, u restricted to the boundary s one. Okay, and the nice thing is that this measure, at least at the formal level, it decomposed into exponential d u zero, gradient u zero, plus integral of gradient p phi square. Just because uh, this is an orthogonal decomposition. So the, the, the energy decomposed into just uh, the energy on the, on the part vanishing on the boundary plus the, the, the harmonic part. And this means you, you can sort of decouple this measure. So you can get this one times du zero time exponential minus the, the harmonic part time d phi and, you, and your phi now is living on the circle, okay? So I said it's not really possible. One has to replace uh, this and for this we need probability. And this is, uh, this is what's called uh, Gaussian free field. Gaussian free field is a probabilistic way to represent what I said here. Except that we will not work in H1, but in uh, H minus epsilon, some negative sobre space. And this is somehow the, the, the reason of all travel in general in, in, in QFT, that you, you cannot really work with function, but you have to work with distribution. And then you need to do renormalization. Uh, you know, if you have a, like exponential of the field, if, if the field is a distribution, uh, how to define this? It's a, kind of a mess. Um, anyway. So Gaussian free field. What is the Gaussian free field? So there are two guys. One is on the circle, and one is on the, the unit disk. So let me quickly explain. How much time do I have? Like five minutes or a bit more? Or less? Three minutes? Wow. Okay, that's really short. Okay, so in three minutes. So XD is the Dirichlet Gaussian free field. So I will denote it GFF. 
So it's a random distribution, so it belongs to H minus epsilon of D, and it's a, it's a Gaussian field defined in the distribution sense, uh, so that the covariance is given by the green function with Dirichlet condition on the disk. The green function is directly conditioned. So you can construct uh, 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 some, this is random, so it depends on the probabilistic uh, parameter, and it lives in this. And one way to construct it is just as a random uh, combination of eigenfunction of the Laplacian uh, on the unit disk with directly condition, basically. And now the, the feed, uh, the Gaussian free field on the circle, on S1, the way I want to define it, I want to define it as a random uh, combination of Fourier mode, where phi n uh, for n positive, uh, phi minus n is equal to phi n bar. So it's it's a real. This is real valued. To uh, define it, I define it like this, where where. Uh, I, I, where the xn and yn are random variables which are distributed with Gaussian measure. So it's an infinite product of Gaussian measure. So if you do this, you can see that this actually belongs to h minus epsilon, of s1, and phi zero equals c. Phi zero will be distributed with Lebesgue measure. So I get a random distribution on the circle, a random distribution on, on, on the unit disk. You can compute its covariance is given by the log of theta minus theta prime. Theta prime. And uh, just to finish, I want to give you how to, uh, how to express the representation of Vira Zoro using this field. I, I told you we, 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 we like to create a dynamics uh, on H1. We cannot really do it uh, with a measure. So we need to work with this Gaussian free field instead. So we will make a, di a dynamic on uh, H minus epsilon. And there is a very nice formula, actually. It's a Markovian process, which gives you a, a semi-group. So let me just uh, tell you. So now you take V uh, of Z dz Markovian. Define the operator. Tt uh, of Tt on L2 of H minus epsilon of the unit circle with respect to this measure, I call it mu. So mu is the back measure on the zero Fourier mode of phi time Gaussian for the other Fourier mode. You, you, you make, so this is a Hilbert space. H is actually a separable Hilbert space. And how is TT defined? TT F, so F is a function on L2 on the space of distribution on the circle. So I take a function F. This is an element in H minus epsilon S1. And this is this Gaussian free field here. Uh, how I define it is as follow. So I take the expectation with respect to the Dirichlet Gaussian free field of uh, F that I compose. I take my so X is XD plus P phi uh, plus Q log F prime T or FT. S1. And then uh, I add a potential term. So it's really a Feynman, Feynman, catch, uh, Feynman catch formula. DZ over Z gamma Q. And here I integrate of over Z minus FTD. So this is the, the formula for the, 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 the action uh, 
uh, of this flow. So you compose your Gaussian free field, which is xd plus p phi, this random field, by ft. You add the drift. You restrict to, so I take x is defined here. I move at time t, I have a curve here. I restrict my field to this curve. So it gives me actually a field on the circle again. This is this field on, on, on the circle here. And I evaluate f on it. And I put a potential term. So this is a feynman cac uh, type form. Formula. And the result is that if you define this like this, this is actually a Markovian semi group. So in fact, Tt is equal to exponential minus Thv. And if I compute the generator, and I'll, be, I'll finish here, I just give you the formula of the generator H of V is equal to the sum of Vn ln plus Vn tilde. Vn bar, sorry, ln tilde, or n bigger or equal to zero, if, if you write V of z as the sum of uh, Vn, z, n plus one, z over dz for n bigger than zero. And ln and ln tilde are two uh, independent, meaning self-commuting, uh, virile zero algebra, Viral zero algebra representation in the Hebrew space uh, in H with central charge uh, C equal one plus six Q square. So what it says is that there are two copies of Viral zero algebra. And you see here, remember the width algebra was uh, generated by ZN plus one DZ. So what we have done, we have taken a combination of this uh, vector field. We quantize it, quantize it means acting on the Gaussian free field on this random distribution, we make a, a Markovian evolution. We look at the generator, and you can see that the, the, the generator is actually generating the, your whole algebra, at least for n positive here. And now what, what you can do is that you just take the adjoint. If n is positive, you take the adjoint, and you define L minus n is just the adjoint of Ln, and you have your full representation. And using this, actually, uh, we can solve completely the the Liouville theory and uh, define uh, the so-called conformal block that I di didn't define here, but uh, they're, they're obtained from this construction somehow. Of course, I mean, there, there, are, there are really a lot uh, more involved, but uh, this is one aspect I wanted to mention. <laughs>